Hey everybody, Pastor Ryan, the roving giant here, and I am gonna make a short video for you this morning. I've had a couple requests from subscribers to show my winter hammock system. Like, how, how do I sleep in the hammock in the winter, and what got me to the system that I have right now? So, without further ado, let's get this thing started. My hammock camping started with this little guy. This is an Eagle's Nest Outfitters Eno double nest hammock. My brother had a single nest, he had me lay in it. I wasn't convinced that you could actually sleep in one of those things, but I laid in it and it was pretty comfortable, but it felt kind of tight around the shoulders and stuff. And he said, you know what, try out a double nest. That might be better since you're big. So this is what I started in. So first I'll set this up. I think these ones will do a little better. Now, I don't normally set up the suspension quite this tight, but these trees are still a little bit far apart for this. This is a nine and a half foot hammock. Now, that ridge line is one that I added in myself using Amsteel, and these don't come with that. But this is essentially the hammock that I started in. Getting into an Eno hammock is just like any other. You just open up to the middle and pop your way in. Now, this is sagging down a lot. I think I actually need to tighten it. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Now it's a little higher off the ground. And this ridge line just keeps this sag somewhere around 30 degrees, which helps a flatter lay at an angle. So, if you're looking at the angle here, when you first start in the hammock, you're tempted to lay about like this, right down the center line of it. But that's not really the best way. Under your knees, your knees are getting hyperextended, and it pulls up around your shoulders and there's all this extra fabric, because these hammocks were made to lay like that which that is about a 15 degree angle. This 15 degree angle lets you have a pretty flat lay. I mean, my head is being pulled up, uh, but my feet are pretty flat down at the end there and are pretty comfortable. But here's where winter camping gets interesting. Now, my butt is cold. So we need to figure out what we're gonna do with that. And as I was heading out for my first ever winter hammock camping trip, what I did is I did a little internet research. I hop on YouTube and I'm checking out different people's channels and I come across Shug, which I think anybody who has done any research on hammock camping has now come across Shug, Sean Emery. So you gotta check out his YouTube channel. Shug's awesome. I can't support him enough. Uh, so one of the things that he mentioned is some people try sleeping pads, camping pads. So I had a couple of camping pads and that's what I tried out next. So let me show you what that looks like. The first camping pad that I tried out was this one. This is a, uh, a Thermarest Trail Scout Large, and I got it just at a local outdoor store. And what I did, kind of set it in the hammock at that 15 degree angle, and just sit in there. And it's a little, it gives you a little bit of insulation. It's, it's comfortable, it's not terrible, but as you can see, it's currently not laid out perfectly. There is absolutely a fiddle factor with this. Yeah, you're, do, you're doing a lot of this like worm scooching, trying to get this thing to there. And you try to stay on it as best you can, but it can be kind of tricky. It's coming right up to my shoulders. I often lay on my side, so I'll lay about like that. But as you can see, my butt's coming off on this end, my knees are coming off on that end. But it does the job, especially when the temperatures are only getting down around 30 or so. So it wasn't long after I started with this pad. I did a trip in October with this pad. It probably hit 32 degrees. Um, and I was comfortable under me. But you may also be wondering, okay, did you use a sleeping bag or something? Yes, I did. Let me get that for you. This sleeping bag I got, this is a, a Kelty Minstrel 20 degree sleeping bag. Now, this certainly keeps me warm down to 20. I've actually taken this down closer to 15 and was perfectly content. And the first time that I came, I slept in it just like I would sleep in any other sleeping bag. I unzip it, opened it like this, hopped on in, zipped up, good to go. 
kept me nice and sealed. So this system worked for me for a while, but then me and my buddy Mike, who you will see in a future video, uh, we decided we were gonna try to do a night, a real cold weather camp. We, we went and camped at this lean-to, and I had this set up, but I knew that it was gonna get real cold. It was supposed to get down into the single digits and get a little bit windy. So, what we did is I added layers to this system. So I kept this same sleeping bag, but I added a couple things. First, on the bottom of everything, I added this. Now this is a pad that I made out of Reflectix insulation material. This is insulation you use on the home. You can buy it for like 10, 15 bucks a roll at your hardware store. And I laid this down as my bottom layer. Now this is very, very insulating, but also it is a vapor barrier, which means that it's not gonna let moisture through. Now, I, I knew this would help, but I wasn't sure if it would quite cut it. So beyond the Reflectix and the Thermarest pad, I also added one more layer. And that's this, this is just a yoga mat. Uh, so I would add the yoga mat as a nice soft top layer on all this, and then put my sleeping bag on top of all that. Uh, and hop on it. With all this stuff happening in this hammock, it is very, very difficult. <laughs> to get yourself situated, but we got there. And with all these added layers of insulation, plus this sleeping bag, I was able to just about get as comfortable as I needed to get. And I was snug as a bug in a rug. That night, it hit negative six, and there was about a 20 mile an hour wind, and I stayed warm. I probably could have been warmer. I was a little bit chilly, but it did the job well enough. But I learned a lot on that trip. And one of the big things that I learned on that trip was that all of these pads and they can work nonetheless you get what you pay for so with all that inexpensive stuff I, I still had to do a lot of fiddling to get situated just right and I wasn't completely warm that night I was warm enough I wasn't like at any risk of survival issues but I wasn't the most comfortable so there's one more piece to this kit that I have to show you before I move on. And that piece is the tarp. You need something to protect you from the weather, from the snow, from the wind, from the rain. I didn't have much, so I just grabbed a tarp from Walmart and I'll show you how I set it up. So in a nutshell, this was how I had the tarp laid out. I, I would do a steep wall on one side to block the wind. I'd make sure that that was on the wind side. On the other side, just enough to have a covering so that I could see out just because I liked seeing out. Now, this worked if there wasn't much wind, but I, what I found out on that six degree trip is that wind makes a big difference. The wind started on one side and then it completely shifted to the other side and was blowing in and blowing snow in. From the ends, it was blowing snow through and this just didn't do the job for me. It was enough like if I was out in the middle of the sun and there might be some dew coming down or a, or a light misty rain, it would do the job, but <laughs> this would not do the job in anything substantial like that trip. So I had to move away from this and I wanted to move away from this tarp, or from this hammock, knowing that it couldn't handle much more. I, it, was, it was a little short for me. So I wanted to try something new. Now I'll show you the, new, the, the second phase of my system. So the next system that I went to was this. This is a DIY hammock that I made using materials from a website called Ripstop by the Roll. Feel free to check them out, links in the description. And uh, I'll show you what this looks like set up. DIY hammock here is a ten and a half foot hammock instead of a nine and a half foot hammock. So it's got a little bit more uh, space in it. I was still using the same pad system that I showed you earlier, but now I had a little bit more room to work with, and I was really enjoying this. Uh, so this is a system that I used for a while. Now, if you're seeing how this lays, this end right here is a bit lower than that end. So I was learning that you'd actually want to lay more like this where your head end is lower than your foot end because it actually gave you a, a flatter lay that way. So that's how I've been laying from then on. 
So this was that basic hammock system. And then the, my next priority was gonna be a tarp. Uh, I needed to have something that could protect me better from the elements because that Walmart yard tarp, it just wasn't cutting it. It didn't do the job in that cold trip and I didn't wanna do another trip without a proper tarp. So. I made my own tarp, which is the orange tarp that you're used to seeing. And that's the tarp that I'm probably gonna stick with for a while. There's some improvements that I think I could make on it since then, but I think it does a great job. There's not enough issue with it to warrant doing anything new. The only other two new pieces of the system since this point that I have added is one more hammock that is even longer than this one. So this one is 10 and a half foot hammock. I made an 11 and a half foot hammock and I really like that. That is That has turned out to be ideal. And that's the hammock that you're used to seeing. You've seen, this is all my system working up to what I'm currently working with. What I think I'll show you next is essentially my current system as I prepare for a trip this weekend, which looks like it could get pretty chilly. And uh, I wanna show you what I'll be using to handle cold now that I'm a couple years in. So now we can talk about my current system. 11 and a half foot roving giant hammock, DIY hammock, but uh, these, this is the same hammock that I would make somebody who goes on my website and orders a hammock. I'd make something similar to this. This has given me all the comfort that I could ever dream of. It lays nice and flat. This is the hammock that I use all year round, no matter what. Love it to death. Uh, now we will add my under quilt. So here's my under quilt. This is from Hammock Gear. As you can see, this is a Hammock Gear Incubator Zero Degree Under Quilt. All sorts of fabric everywhere. Hammock Gear Incubator Zero Degree Under Quilt kind of wraps up under. Instead of having those pads inside the hammock, I'm able to have this under quilt. This thing is awesome. There's a number of features on this that you need to be able to see up close to understand. And I'm gonna hop in my hammock so that you can, but I'm gonna bring you up close to me. The under quilt kind of wraps up around your shoulder here, and it's around your legs over on this side. So you can see, hangs under. This kind of helps on a couple layers. First, you're not gonna fall off it like you do with the sleeping pads. And also, it's got some real nice size insulations. The amount of loft that this has. So when you're trying to insulate, you're, you're trapping air in a, a cavity. And in order to do that, you need that cavity to stay lofted. And this manages to do that very well. There's probably about, probably a solid two, three inches on the foot end and easily three inches down on this end. It's hard, it's hard to show you on camera just how much loft is there between this side and this side. That loft holding all that down inside is what makes all the difference in the world. And that keeps you toasty warm. Now I'll show you from the side the way that this under quilt wraps up around your body. This side, it's a little bit thinner and then it kind of like bulges out over here. This is your head end, this being your foot end. That helps because there's more body up on this end than this end. You don't need as much insulation here. So it cuts a little bit of weight, but it also hugs up right close. So this wraps around your legs, which are thinner. This wraps around your shoulders and your waist, which is a little bit wider. And then on the ends, there's baffling at the ends right here. That seals off that end so air doesn't come flowing down through it. I have this under quilt and now uh, I add in that same sleeping bag that I had before, but I'm also adding in another sleeping bag. I, I also got this cheap zero degree sleeping bag. I got it for like 40 bucks, and it probably keeps me just as warm as that other one, but it's a lot smaller. So what I'm gonna try on this weekend's trip, I'm gonna use two sleeping bags just so I know for sure that I'm warm enough. So I'll, I'm gonna use that big orange one and then I'll show you one other one. Now this other sleeping bag that I have is from a company called Outdoor Life. This claims to be a zero degree bag. I am not convinced. <laughs> I've taken it down to about 11 or 12. Uh, you saw this one on my Carlton Hill winter hammock camping video. You can see the link to that right here. It didn't quite cut it on that trip. So I'm thinking a combination between this one, which is a relatively skinny bag, and the other big orange one, I should be toasty warm. But the last piece of the kit that you gotta see is the tarp. So now we're inside the tarp. Uh, this tarp I made from a kit from Ripstop by the Roll. Uh, it was the Winter 12 DIY tarp kit 
Links in the description. And what I like about this system is that it has walls on or doors on the end. And what those doors do is just flaps that you close off. They make it so that when the wind comes from multiple directions, it's still blocked. And I can stay nice and warm in here with a pretty still air. Um, there's a hole at the top, so it does let air flow through. So it's not like totally sealed in, making it a complete vapor barrier, but it stops everything from getting down on me. If I need to, these lower walls, I can build up some snow and that allows uh, me to completely seal off the bottom if there's a lot of wind but in general it's a really nice cozy little space in here and i, I stay nice and warm so for this weekend i'm gonna try this uh sleeping bag and the other sleeping bag so i have enough insulation uh, this pretend zero degree and another one should get me down to zero just fine uh i, I may be too warm may only need one We'll find out, but I'm gonna bring extra gear. And, and that's the thing, in the winter, uh, it's better to be a bit too heavy and be sure that you have enough warmth than to find yourself out in the middle of nowhere with not enough stuff to keep you warm. That is, that's all my winter hammock camping kit. I mean, I try to wear warm clothes. I try not to wear any cotton, try to wear just wool or some kind of synthetic fabric because uh, they don't stay wet. And yeah, that is kind of the, the evolution of my winter hammock camping system. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to please leave me a comment. Please uh, say like, let me know if you thought it was really interesting. Let me know if you thought it wasn't, whatever. Just leave a comment on the video, like the video. If you uh, want to see more stuff, be sure to click that subscribe button down below. I believe that should be right over here. And uh, click on the little bell icon if you want to get notifications when my videos pop up. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, stay curious, everybody. Uh, I'm so glad that you watched this video. And we'll see you next time.